Hello and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to episode 5 of Rise of the Reds and episode 9 of this beta save. We're just going to quickly talk you through the transfers that we made in the last episode. They were as follows, if we go back to the right season. So on the 9th of June we had... Luis Muriel came in from Leicester, £5 million, rising £7 million. I'll just pull them up so you can have a look at some of the numbers on the screen if you want to pause it. Dribbling 16, finishing 17, first touch 18. Long, shot, um, long shots of 16 as well. Hopefully he can regain some of that goal-scoring form he had at the start of his career at Leicester. After that, as it's gone back a page, we got Dennis Pratt from Leicester. Fee rising to 16 million. Again, some decent numbers in there. Pretty steady across the board. This is annoying me. After that, we brought in Datro Fafana from Molda for £4.2 million. Again, some okay numbers. 20-year-old Ivorian. Physicals are pretty good. There is still room for him to improve. Hopefully, get somewhere near that five-star ability, potential ability. Then, after that, we brought in Joel Drommel from PSV. He'll be our first-choice goalkeeper for the season. Okay, first, um, okay numbers. First touch is a little bit low. His rushing out is a little bit low as well. But, to be honest... Finding the goalkeeper was very, very difficult this summer. After that, it was Simeone Bastoni from Spezia. Again, a lot of yellows. Very, very decent. Can also play at left back as well. Multitude of positions, which is kind of what we want from him. Not going to improve from his three and a half star current ability, but I think he does strengthen the overall squad. After that, we brought in Connor Cody for. It was 3.1 million. Um, it must be 5.5 guaranteed, rising to a bit more. He is what he is. He's a 30 year old defender. He really just strengthened that centre back area. We've got good options now to bring in. I, I like Connor Cody. I'm a massive fan of his. Then we brought in Victor Camarasa from Real Hispalas on a free. Not a bad play to pick up on a free. 29 years of age, three star current ability, three star potential. Should do a decent job in either centre, defensive, or attacking midfield roles, really. Then we brought in Joe Bryan on a free. He's, I don't know how much he's going to play at left back. Two and a half star current ability, two and a half star potential. Some decent numbers again. Not going to be a player that's going to probably let us down if we need to bring him in. Niskins Cabano as well came in on a free. He can play all across that attacking line, left winger, right winger, or attacking midfield. Again, some okay numbers. His strength is a little bit lacking as is his jumping reach, but pace is okay, stamina is okay. Again, probably not going to be a first team player on the regular, but. Someone we could probably bring in and do a job for us. And then lastly, we brought in Jean-Philippe Mateta. 13 dribbling, 15 finishing, 13 first touch. 16 balance, 16 jumping reach. His physicals are all pretty good. He's 26, not going to improve much from where he is. But hopefully he can get some goals. And if you look, he got 15 last season for Palace in the Premier League. So hopefully, I mean, if he can get 15 to 20 for us, that would be ideal. We also have one more transfer coming in. If we go to the transfer... And it actually shows we've got two. So we have got offers in for Alan Velasco from FC Dallas and Yuri Alberto from Zenit St. Petersburg. We can only get one of these players in because of the funds we are paying. Yuri Alberto is a striker. He can play the wing as well. 12 dribbling, 15 finishing, 12 first touch. A plus on the scout report as well. If we just bring that up as well. He is an advanced forward. He would be third best striker behind Mateta and Awane. 16 pace 16 acceleration quite a quick striker 22 a little bit of room to improve as well the other player is alan velasco who's a 21 year old midfielder play on the wing or behind the striker he has got 15 dribbling 13 finishing 13 first touch now I, a plus as well now i made signings for both like things for both of these players and i'm not sure which way we go with it if i'm completely honest i haven't done a comparison just yet so we'll do a comparison now and we'll have a look at where we think we're going to go with this. So, Yuri Alberto is worse at defending, but he's a striker. So, I don't really see too much of that. Mentals are the same. Yuri Alberto is better aerially. Technically, it goes to Velasco. Attacking, it just goes to Alberto. Vision, Velasco. Speed, Yuri Alberto. And physical is Yuri Alberto as well. I think Yuri Alberto might be the player we go for. We may come back in for... Alan Velasco well we may delay it and see if we can get a couple of players off the books and maybe raise a few funds because if we could get both of these in I think we could be an excellent excellent prospect for this season as we showed you at the end of the last episode season preview as we're still in 17th 500 to 1 is what it is really I didn't expect much more I thought we may be a tad higher 
but like I say, it is what it is. So what we'll do today is we'll play the West Ham, the Man United games. We'll show you highlights of the Carabao Cup tie against Colchester. And then maybe the Fulham game, depending on how long these West Ham and Man United games go. Depending on how long this video goes, we may show you the Fulham game as well. So with that being said, let's get into it. Let's go to the first lot of fixtures. First Saturday fixture, sorry, of this season. As we just go through to 3 o'clock. And the side that we are going to play is going to look like this. It's going to be Dromel in goal. Larea... Warrell, McKenna and Aurier across the back, Fruller in front of them, Lingard on the left, Dennis on the right and Brennan Johnson plays behind Taya Awane and Jean-Philippe Mateta. The bench, Willie Bolly, Nico Williams, Connor Cody, Morgan Gibbs-White, Victor Camarasso, Josh Bola, Dennis Pratt, Datro Fafana and Lewis Muriel. I think we've got a good strong 20 players there and i think that is exactly what we need to do brennan johnson is unhappy because he wants a new deal to reflect his ability we'll look into that in this episode as well let's get into it away at the london stadium against west ham let's see what we can do and also i've just noticed that middlesbrough and spurs have both got minus four points and i'm not entirely sure why that is might have to have a look into it after this game if I remember. As Barrow now down the left hand side gets towards the byline, pulls it back for Suchek. Suchek into Downs. Downs with a shot from distance is over the bar. McKenna now looks long towards Mateta. Flicks on to Awani. Ty Awani gets there first. Now to Dennis. Dennis with a bit of space gets towards the byline now. Back onto his left foot. Pulls it back. Through the Robbie. Into Serge Aurier who smashes it in. And Serge Aurier gets the opening goal of the season for Nottingham Forest. It is 1 0. Really well worked down the right hand side. Emmanuel Dennis pulled it back into Thriller and he laid it back to the on rushing Serge Aurier who smashes it past the goalkeeper. West Ham United 0. Nottingham Forest 1. Pull back to Thriller and he just helps it across towards Serge Aurier who smashes it into the corner. 1 0. Kufal. Can he go past his man? Gets the ball towards Barrow. There's a tackle by Aurier. And, oh, I thought I was going to be giving the penalty. Dennis goes to ground. Pulls back to Skamaka. And Gianluca Skamaka equalises almost immediately. It is one or I thought there was a shout for a penalty there. As Serge Aurier went to ground, it wasn't to be. And the ball was put back in from that left-hand side. I don't know whether Aurier tripped Barrow there. But Johnson... On the left-hand side, rode the challenge of Dennis, got the crossing, and Skamaka side foots home from about 10 yards. It is one all. McKenna looks out to Dennis. Infield to Serge Aurier. Now, those two working really well on that right-hand side. Serge Aurier has to pull back onto his left foot. Now, gives it to Dennis. Can he get past his man? He can't. Has to go back to McKenna. McKenna cutting infield now. Switches out towards the left-hand side of Lingard. Great first touch from Jesse Lingard. He's crossed his block. Frula into Dennis. Touches the passing man. Mateta hits the post and it somehow stays out. No one following it up either. Really well done. Good strike from Jean-Philippe Mateta. And it just stays out and it remains one all here. And it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to walk away here from this away tie. First game of the season with... <clears throat> A draw of some kind. As that ball goes through to Mateta. And it's found its way past Ariola. It is 2-1. He smashed the ball pretty much directly at him. And it found its way in. I don't know if it was a mistake. We'll probably see better from behind the goal. McKenna over halfway. Out to Serge Aurier. He took a touch. Played it through for Mateta. And that finish. Oh, it's literally gone through the goalkeeper. Not a strong enough arm. And it is 2-1 here. 25 minutes in. And Jean-Philippe Mateta... Gets a goal on his debut here. And that is what we needed him to do. We needed him to get the goals. And he's doing just that right now. As we bring it out from the back again. As Larea goes over halfway. Looks forward. Headed away by Zuma. And Puketa now. With his back to the Forest goal. Dispossessed. And he's into Mateta. What a chance for him once again. And Jean-Philippe Mateta. Two goals in the first half an hour of his debut. Makes it 3-1. And he could be a really, really good signing for us here. It was a mistake by Paqueta. He had his back to goal. It was dispossessed by Frula. He went into Tayo Awane. Ball round the corner for Mateta. His first touch took him wide, but it just it probably made it easier for him. And he beats the goalkeeper, Ariola, which is near post. West Ham United 1, Nottingham Forest 3. Paqueta into Barrow now. Barrow goes into the box. Chance for him and Drummel makes the save down to his right hand side. Doesn't get to the ball there. Paqueta now fires it over. Frula. Looks long, that's cut out. Goes back on wins again, but Darren's can cut that out. Into Vlasic. Lorraine with a great tackle there. Tries to play it down to Awane and Zuma cuts it out. And it's back to the goalkeeper now. I wonder if we could put some pressure on him because he doesn't look very assured, does Ariola? But Aurier wins that ball. Into Emmanuel Dennis now. Dennis looks down the line. He's potentially going to get there first. He's not. I thought for a second he may just get between the defender and the goalkeeper. No look for him there. As Paqueta fix that on now to Skamaka. Skamaka to the byline. Pulls it back for Kufal. Into Vlasic. Takes deflection over the bar. I'm not sure who that hit. But it's 
luckily for us, gone over the bar. It remains 3-1. Corner on the far side will be whipped in. In swing by Vlasic. And McKenna gets up there, wins that one well. And Ty Owen, you know, can bring it away over halfway. And there's a bit of a counter-attack on here. As this ball goes into Mateta, is a player arriving in the box. Onto his left foot. He's going to get the shot away. Goes down. Aurier shoots. Comes back to Emmanuel Dennis now. Emmanuel Dennis pulls it back across. And Mateta, oh... I thought he just nipped in there to Ariola. No look for him. Still remains 3-1. Still on two goals. Is that header by Suchek over the bar? End-to-end -end stuff here. But West Ham just haven't been able to hit the target. As we go into half-time there, it looks as if it's going to be 3-1. It is 3-1. And that is exactly what we needed from the first game of the season. Corner kick. Vlasic whips it in. Cleared away. Back to Vlasic now. Has a second attempt. But Brennan Johnson nips in. Is he going to be able to hang on to it? He does and gives it into Drommel, who fires it long. Oh, and he goes up for it. Zuma wins the header, though. Paqueta switches it out to the left-hand side and Barrow. Barrow with a great first touch there. Now gets across him with his right foot. It's very deep. Vlasic is going to do well to keep that in. He does keep it in. Kufal in towards Skamaka. It's flicked away from him. Barrow, he's headed back in and somehow it's kept out between Drommel and the defender and smashed away for a throw on the near side. I don't know if you can hear that, but... Apparently the heavens have just opened. It sounds ridiculous. A barrel from distance and Drommel hangs onto it comfortably. It was pretty much straight at him. He looked like he made a bit of a meal of that as he was backtracking to take the ball. But it remains 3-1 and Drommel's just taking his time now. Rolls it out to McKenna and he goes into Serge Aurier now. Comes in field. Gives it out wide to Dennis. Aurier continuing that run inside. But Dennis now doesn't use him. Looks in for Pratt. Dennis Pratt and it's saved by the goalkeeper. Pratt now will whip this corner in. Cody goes up for it, headed away from him. Barrow can flick it away. Only as far as Frula now. Into Pratt. Now he'll cross it towards the far post. He was offside though. Four now as McKenna clears that away. Now can Mateta get there first? He can't. And now Zuma picks it up. Looks long for Jared Bowen. Jared Bowen flicks it on, but there's no one there. And Connor Cody can hook it away. Only as far as Emmanuel Dennis. Dennis now looks out towards Datra for far. Now it's cut out by Kufal. Bowen switches out to Barrow. Barrow with a shot. Beats the goalkeeper at the near post. And Musa Barrow makes it 3-2. Just over eight, eight minutes to go plus stoppage time. And that is a really poor time to concede. Dennis looked for that ball out towards Dadra Fafana. Kufal got in there first into Bowen. And he just twitches it out to that left-hand side. And Barrow takes a touch. Beats Drommel from close range. It's 3-2. Corner kick now. Delefeu will take it. Ball in. It's been missed by everyone. But there's been a foul. And is that Dadra Fafana who could be at fault for both the goals after bringing him on? The penalty review... Penalty has been awarded. Can Drommel make himself a hero here in his debut game? Are we going to throw away a two-goal lead? As Suchek steps up, hits it straight at Drommel and gets the rebound. And it remains 3-2. And we're doing everything we can to try and throw this away here. But are we just going to hang on to it? Three minutes of stoppage time as we go into that now. And the time is up. It is a victory on the opening day of the season. West Ham United 2, Nottingham Forest 3. Goals for Jean-Philippe Mateta. Two for him. Serge Aurier getting the other one. And we walk away from the London Stadium. 3-2. Doing our best to try and throw away at the end there. Luis Muriel had a poor game since he came on. Only a 6.6. .6. But we didn't play particularly well as a whole. But we get the victory and we move on to the Man United game in the next game. And hopefully we can back this up with back-to-back -back victories. Here he is. Yuri Alberto comes in for £17.25 million from Zenit. And the one thing that I'm going to show you is we just send him on an intensive language course. Is we have sold one player. And we have sold, if we can just go the right way, Musa Niakate to Atletico Madrid. £17.25 million for a centre-back who... Second best centre back, but not that much better than Worrell. And what it does is, is it allows us to bring in Alan Velasco as well. And moving a little bit of money about will allow us to bring in Andy Pelmar from Basel as cover at centre back. And I think that one player out and three players in, I think 100% makes us so much stronger than what we were even this time last week. We're just waiting on work permits for these two guys, but that should be done before the end of the window. We'll have no money left over, no wage budget, so there'll be no point in showing you deadline day because we will be done. This will be our squad for probably the rest of the season unless we get some additional funds in January. And hopefully this can be the squad that can push onwards and upwards. So team, going into this home tie against Man United, a few changes made. Drumbles in goal, Richards, Worrell, McKenna and Aurier across the back. Fuller in front of them. It's Gustavo, Scarpa and Gibbs White either side with Pratt playing just behind Yuri Alberta and Jean-Philippe Mateta and hopefully 
Another new signing, another new strike. Hopefully he can hit the ground running just like Mateta did. Gustavo Scarpa whip this corner in, in swing. And McKenna goes up and it's in. And Scott McKenna opens the score in inside the first four minutes. Corner whipped in from Gustavo Scarpa. And Scott McKenna getting up, winning that header off the underside of the bar. Nottingham Forest 1, Manchester United 0. And in a crowd of players there, does fantastically well to win that header. Head it past the goalkeeper. Tom Heaton is the goalkeeper. Okay. This is the second time that I've noticed that the goalkeeper at a so-called big club, as you'd call it, is probably the wrong goalkeeper. As Sancho switches out to Dallo, in towards Rashford, headed away by Warrell. Frula goes up. Bruno Fernandes from distance. He finds his way through Drummle. It is one all. 12 minutes in. Great strike from Bruno Fernandes. Maybe Drummle should have done a little bit better, but nonetheless, it is one all here at the City Ground. So, yeah, as I was saying, I think Arsenal played Turner. In a game last season, which was somewhat surprising, because I just you just presume it would have been Ramsdale and goal, and obviously it wasn't. So, I wonder if this is a little bit of a bug, because like I say, it's the second team that I've noticed. What you call the the big six, as you'd call them, that haven't got arguably their first choice goalkeeper. I mean, considering they've had Dean Henderson back off us as well, you thought he'd have been higher up the pecking order than Heaton, but. Isn't to be as Ugarte. That's cut out by Frula. Looks over top. Can Yuri Alberto get there? He can. And oh, Heaton made a great save with his right hand. Otherwise, Yuri Alberto would have had a goal on his debut. Morgan Gibbs White will in swing this ball in there. Wall gets up onto the roof of the net. It remains 1 all. Dennis Pratt now with his free kick. It's a long way out. He'll go for goal. And Heaton makes another good save. Gibbs White now in swinging corner. McKenna goes up over the bar. Sancho. To whip this ball in. Ugarte goes up for a bit. headed away by McKenna. Dallo gives it back into Sancho. He'll pull it back across. And it's a mistake from Drommel. And Anthony has a simple job of tapping in for his second of the season. It is 2-1. And that was a weird celebration. I thought for a second it had been disallowed. I don't know why it would have been. Because obviously the ball was palmed away by the goalkeeper. It was headed up and away. Dallo played it out to Sancho. He took a touch. Got to the byline. Pulled it back across. And Drommel spilled it back into the path to Anthony. And it is 2-1 to Manchester United. Back from a goal down. And neither goal has left Joel Drommel, you know, covered in glory. As Richards brings down Anthony. And he's already on a yellow card. And now he's going to see Omar Richards, who we brought in a left back for today. Sent off. Down to 10 men. Not a great start. Cody looks over top for Alberto. Maguire heads it away. Scarpa goes past his man. Gets across and towards Mateta. And the header is straight at Tom Heaton. Bruno Fernandes, Frula gets in there, but Fernandes manages to hang on to it. He looks back for Maguire, fires it long, but Worrell is there to cut it out. Over the top, can Yuri Alberto keep it in? He does keep it in, but Maguire can nip back in after the mistake he made with that ball. Does really well there to win that back. And Anthony finds Bruno Fernandes, who's in behind the defence. Bruno Fernandes is a poor effort from him. Not as good as the goal he scored on 12 minutes, and it makes it still 2-1 here. Five minutes before half-time, and we are going to be under the cosh for a lot of this game. Now, that's poor, and Sancho fires it over the bar. Worrell looks long. And that is very, very wayward there from Warrell. And Dallo can bring it away. Gives it to Malassia. Malassia down the line for Sancho. Looks to go in film there. Switches it out towards Anthony. Takes it down. Digs it over the goalkeeper and over the bar. And with just over two minutes, just under two minutes to go, sorry, to half time. It is 2 1. It is 2 1 at half time. And we've played okay, but the 10 men is just hindering us enough. And the fact that we haven't got an out and out left back on at left back right now, because apparently I forgot to put a left back on the bench. It's going to be a struggle from here on in. Nottingham Forest 1, Manchester United 2. Fernandes with his free kick, rips it in. Headed by Varane over the bar. Yuri Alberto now gives it back to Willy Bolly. We've changed the formation. We've gone three centre-backs and then two wider players. We've brought them back a little bit. Tried to really make it a bit more difficult for them to work through. And obviously the fact of having three centre-backs on the pitch as well. With one of them playing left back, I thought it might be the more sensible option. As Lingard cuts in there, that's really well done. Mateta is very congested there in the middle of the park. As Maguire looks back for Varane, he has space, gives it to Ugarte, and he flicks it over the top for Sancho. Sancho now into Anthony. Anthony for Sancho, really well worked, really good goal. Jaden Sancho, 3-1, probably kills it off here on the hour mark. Nottingham Forest 1, Manchester United 3. Rashford will pick this up here on the near side. Comes back in field. Gives it to Dallow. Dallow swears it across for Sancho. 4-1. Maguire looks to switch it out towards Sancho. Cody wins the header though. Ugarte takes it down. Ugarte through for Rashford. Who's got between multiple men. And a great block there from Willy Barley. 
to put it over the bar. Still 4-1. Corner kick will come in from that far side. Being in swing at from Bruno Fernandes. He whips the ball in. Headed away. Can Cody get there first? He can't. Ball comes back in. Maguire lays it back for Dallo. Varane turns. Fruda gets there. Casemiro tries to dispossess him. And it fired forward towards John Philip Mateta. And I think that sending off now has come back to us. I know we were 2-1 down at the time. But they've just dominated here in the second half against the 10 men. And you'd expect it as well. Really, we haven't been able to get a lot going in the second half. As Willie Bolly looks forward, Lindelof can take it down under no real pressure now. Gives it to Varane. Dallo comes in field, gives it to Rafford. First time ball into Fernandes. That is brilliantly worked out to Sancho. And he probably should have hit the target there. Probably should have done better. But at 4-1, it's not going to make an awful lot of difference, is it? And I think, we, I think we're all subbed out. I think we've made all five now. As that ball goes in towards Asensio. Falls to Sancho. Tucks it home. Gets his hat trick. And it is... a. 25 minute hat trick for Jaden Sancho in the second half 62 66 and 87 he gets his third it's five for United and with with a sending off it's no more than they deserve really they've just been better than us in all aspects of the game and full time at the city ground Forest one United five and we need to build on this I say we need to build on this but actually what I meant to say was we need to come back from this build on not having such a bad performance but sending off is never going to help in that situation and it is what it is we'll bring you highlights of the Colchester game now probably be a lot of changes made for that game as we just look to rotate and rest and bring players back fit for the Fulham game which will be off camera and hopefully we can return to winning ways in just in normal action and then back in the league in the next game a lot of changes for this game against Colchester away from home Drummle Williams, Bolly, Cody, Pistoni across the back. Mangala is in the defensive midfield role. Datra Fafana, Alan Velasco and Josh Bowler in the attacking midfield roles. And Luis Muriel and Yuri Alberto play up front. And hopefully we can get a result because we had a really poor performance in the Carabao Cup last season against... I think it was Ipswich we got smashed by at Leicester. So hopefully we can do a job today here at the Job Serve Community Stadium. And the opening goal of the game. Luis Muriel gets it. Bastoni with the through ball for Velasco. It was cut out. It fell to Muriel. Great first touch took away from Dallison. And he beats the goalkeeper from close range. Colchester nil. Nottingham Forest won. 2 0 goal for Simeone Bastoni. Datra Fana coming in field from the right hand side. Laid it into Bastoni. Shot from distance. Beats the keeper at his near post. 2 0. 25 minutes on the clock. 3 0. Here a second for Luis Muriel. Ball into Bowler. Inside right channel, lays it across, Muriel on the edge of the six-yard box, tucks home. That is what he did so well for Leicester. Hopefully this will give him a bit of confidence as well. A couple of goals here. 3-0, half an hour gone. 4-0, Luis Muriel from the penalty spot. Keep went the right way, but the power beats the goalkeeper. 4-0. It's 5, Neko Williams gets the goal, took the ball down, gets into the box, unchallenged, puts it across the goalkeeper, inside of the post. Brilliant finish from Neko Williams, 5-0. It is six, a goal for O'Brien. Williams played it infield to Lingard. His cross was blocked. O'Brien coming infield on his left foot, smashes it through the hands of O'Hara. Six nil, six minutes to play. And it is seven. Brennan Johnson gets in on the act now. Poor goal kick. Low managed to get it, but Camarasso won the ball back, gave it to Brennan Johnson. His first touch took it away from the defender, and the power beats O'Hara. It is seven nil, and there is just over five minutes to play. There's a tight offside on this as well. Didn't look like it. No, he's timed the run really well there. Great ball from Camarasa, and Brennan Johnson makes it seven. Job done in the Carabao Cup. 7 0 victory away at Colchester. Luis Muriel got a hat trick, rounding off just into the second half from the penalty spot. Simeone Bastoni got the other one in the first half. He made it 2 0 with that. Neko Williams made it 5. O'Brien made it six, and Brennan Johnson made it seven. Two goals in the 84th and 86th minute, just to make it look probably worse than it probably should have been. Decent performances all round from the boys. Only two players out of the 16 that played that averaged under a seven. Larea at 6.9, and Velasco at 6.9 as well. Good performance. Nice way to end the episode. Few goals for some of the boys, and hopefully Luis Muriel in particular can take this forward and get some goals in the league. So there you have it then, first episode of the second season, 3-2 victory over West Ham, 5-1 defeat to Man United and then a 7-0 victory over Colchester in the Carabao Cup. Third round tie will be at the end of September. What we are going to do now is we're going to play through the month of September um, and then we're going to come back 
for a bunch of games at the end of October, at the start of November, Everton through to Chelsea, a couple of games which we would be expected to win and a couple of games that we'd be expected to lose to really just mix it up from the 22nd through to the 4th. Like I said, this season we want to get through the season a little bit quicker. Hopefully the plan is to try and get through to the play the third season by the time the full game comes out. The plan probably will be to get filming done in bulk and there may be some episodes after the full game's gone out but they'll all be played on the beta save. So that's the plan for tomorrow's episode. Everton, Burnley, Liverpool and Chelsea will play these games off camera and hopefully we could be in a good position by the time we come back. If we just look at what the players have been doing, three goals for Luis Muriel, obviously all in the cup, two for Mateta, one for Aurier, McKenna, Bastoni, Johnson, O'Brien and Neko Williams. Best player thus far has been Josh Bowley, who had a fantastic performance in that cup game. So much so he's going to be rewarded with a start in the next game in that right wing position. Hopefully he can continue to build on that because that was a really good performance from him. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you tomorrow where we carry on with league action and hopefully keep building towards safety for a second consecutive season.